Yeah. Good evening. Is it audible to you? Good evening. Is it audible to you? Naga Nil. Okay, okay. Okay. Right. So, CH Navin. Uh, let me, let me, one minute, one, one second, not one minute answer. Just I went on monetization. Okay. Still. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we start? Now continuously I'm giving support type. Okay. We go as soon as we can complete. So first chapter, uh, first uh, onwards I'm going to explain clearly what are autotrophs and what are heterotrophs. The first one more question we discuss. Ah, okay. We are going to start. Already we started. What are autotrophs and what are heterotrophs? The plants which can prepare their own food. Here we won't say plants. The organs which can prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis, which we call as autotrophs. So, give some examples for autotrophs. All green plants are called autotrophs. What do we call? All green plants are called autotrophs. So because in that green plants, chlorophyll is there, which traps the sunlight. Okay. They prepare their own food. Yeah. Good evening. Welcome, Shailaja. So, autotrophs completed. Give some examples for autotrophs. All green plants you call as. Then autotrophs also known as food factory of the world are organisms. All green plants. Okay. Good. Asmita. Next, we are discussing about what are heterotrophs? Heterotrophs means which cannot prepare their own food. They depend on another organism for their food. We are heterotrophs. We depend on another organism. So that's what we are called as or we are known as heterotrophs. Clear? So green plants are autotrophs. Animals and human beings are heterotrophs because we cannot prepare our own food. Right? So next. So what are the units of light? What are the units of light? Photons. So just if you, you if you possible to give the replay, you can type it. Otherwise, just you listen. So there are two types of chlorophylls are there in the plant cells. Chlorophyll A, blue green. Chlorophyll B, yellow green. So these blue green and yellow green. Hi, Sonu. This is class for the students. Blue, green and yellow green, these are the chlorophylls which are present in the chloroplast. Those chloroplasts receive sunlight. The units of sunlight is known as photons. Units of sunlight is known as a photons. So that's what the photons absorbed by the chlorophyll A and B and it prepares starch. It prepares starch. So that's what the green plants are autotrophs. Green plants, they use solar energy to combine water with the carbon dioxide to prepare starch. Good evening, sir. Antnar. Bhushan Rao. Just you type your name. I don't know your parents' name, so that's what. Okay, okay, right. Bindu. Right? So, autotrophs, heterotrophs, then chloroplast contain two types of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll A, blue-green. Chlorophyll B, yellow-green. It absorbs or it receives sunlight. It receives sunlight. So the units of sunlight is known as a photon. So up to now, it completed. Then what was the first equation of photosynthesis? And who gave the photosynthesis equation at the first time? C.B. Van Nail. Who gave the first photosynthesis equation? C.B. Van Nail. In 1931, C.B. Van Nail given first equation for the photosynthesis. What was that? Uh, CO2 plus H2O gives us CH2O plus H2O plus O2. 
carbon dioxide combined with water carbohydrate water and oxygen formation occur it is the first equation which is given by cv van nail in the year 1931 okay 1931 so i already said that what was the first equation of photosynthesis co2 plus 2h2o carbon dioxide plus 2h2o water use rest CH2O carbohydrate plus water plus oxygen. It is the first equation. Then balance equation, you know that very well. Write about the balance equation. R first equation means CH2O plus H2O plus O2. You have to write. So write the photosynthesis equation means CH C6H2O O6 plus 12H2O plus uh, 6H2O plus O2. That you want to write. So first equation and a common equation, balance equation. So you have to read the question carefully whether it is a first equation or whether it is a balance equation okay that is the intention i think so it is clear so purple bacteria and purple bacteria made this activity cb van nail and hydrogen sulfide formation occur instead of who what here water and oxygen so there hydrogen sulfide gas but in green plants oxygen formation occur is it clear are you there yes or no just you put your response hmm vamshi gamer what vamshi right so next we are going to discuss about uh, how do you find carbohydrates present in the leaf how do you find carbohydrates present in the leaf that iodine test to be made to find the carbohydrates in the leaf what will we do we will take a test tube in that we will take methylated spirit then we will take beaker in the beaker water we will take in the water we will keep the methylated spirit test tube with the leaf so there we discuss different types of questions why don't we burn test tube directly methylated spirit can catch the fire accidents occur that leaf will burn so that's what so why do we burn these means why do we boil the leaf in the methylated spirit here to remove the chlorophyll so methylated spirit in the methylated spirit we will boil the leaf to remove the chlorophyll then only starch is there when we apply iodine solution after boiling then that uh, leaf turns into blue black color with the iodine solution here to to remove the chlorophyll why we are boiling to remove the chlorophyll so quite opposite question we discussed quite opposite question we discussed what is the quite opposite question so why do we keep the potted plant in the dark room for light is essential and for carbon dioxide essential there what uh, here what what is the difference between these two situations here to remove the chlorophyll to find out only starch there to remove the starch chlorophyll will be there after that we will keep in the sunlight or after that we will keep in somewhere for the different situations according to the activity okay right so two questions are there how do you find whether the starch present or not in the leaf by using iodine solution the second question why do we boil the leaf in the methylated spirit to remove the chlorophyll these two questions we discussed okay photosynthesis water without water no photosynthesis air photosynthesis so priestly experiment oxygen evolution occur so when the photosynthesis process occur green leaves releases oxygen the bell jar experiment we have to explain so what is release outside exactly so vice versa quite reverse it is useful for the plants to prepare the starch so rat to candle okay rat to candle and mint plant in that bell jar experiment we discussed so vice versa means quite reverse candle releases carbon dioxide rat releases carbon dioxide that carbon dioxide utilized by the green plants and they release oxygen so life gas okay then lava is there 
named as it is oxygen fixed gas carbon dioxide so vice versa live gas is named as a oxygen by the lava is okay then here who discovered live gas oxygen joseph priestley at that time he said it is a live gas 1774 in 75 lava is are named as a oxygen so that is a priestley's experiment don't forget the right about the priestley's experiment means live gas priestley discovered then lava is are named as so whatever the live gas which is released by the green plants that utilized by the rat and candle whatever the air which is released by the rat and candle that is a fixed gas that is a carbon dioxide which is used for the green plants to prepare starch vice versa white reverse white reverse then next we are going to discuss we are going to discuss about uh, light is essential for the photosynthesis not light i think it is carbon dioxide essential for the photosynthesis okay carbon dioxide essential for the photosynthesis you know that carbon dioxide essential for the photosynthesis carbon dioxide so take a potted plant keep in the dark room 3 to 4 days why do we keep there that already i asked just now that question to remove the starch already prepared then the leaves get wrinkled and it is inactive at that time we have to keep a wide mouthed glass jar with the rubber caps tight we have to keep that uh, cork tightly without allowing air before arranging like this we have to pour koh so here i asked a question expand koh potassium hydroxide so based on that we asked one question why do we take koh in that uh, jar potassium hydroxide absorbs carbon dioxide which is in the glass jar now half of the leaf in the glass jar half of the leaf out of the glass jar so that's what uh, inner leaf inner leaf receives light receives water already chlorophyll is there except carbon dioxide outside leaf what is there everything is there external factors and internal factors internal factors chlorophyll water is there in the leaf external factor carbon dioxide and sunlight is there so after completion of 4 to 5 hours or 5 to 6 hours keeping in the sunlight then again we go for the methylated spirit means we are going to boil in the methylated spirit then we are going to apply iodine solution outside leaf turns into blue black color inside only yeah potassium hydroxide we used to remove carbon dioxide which is in the glass jar so above the potassium hydroxide empty space is there that is not empty space that is full of air in that according to mixture of gases 0.033 carbon dioxide is there that carbon dioxide absorbs by the potassium hydroxide nitrogen oxygen is present in that empty space no carbon dioxide is there okay so that's what uh, without carbon dioxide only we are doing that activity in the absence of carbon dioxide whether the photosynthesis occur or not that is we are going to find so without carbon dioxide there is no photosynthesis process that we learnt very clearly by doing this activity why did we keep in the dark room to remove the starch why did we boil in the methylated spirit to remove the chlorophyll why did we use KOH to absorb the carbon dioxide. Why did we boil the leaf in the methylated spirit to remove the chlorophyll? Then why did we use iodine solution to find out the starch in the leaf? So all these questions, one after one, you can ask yourself. So many answers you will get. I think so. Carbon dioxide essential for photosynthesis. We can find by doing this activity. Okay what are the precautions here we want to take when we are arranging the rubber cork that should be tight we have to use grease or vaseline it should not allow air into the glass jar then whatever the glass jar which we took yeah starch or carbohydrate is a common glucose also we can say that so the glass jar which we took that should be transparent if it is not transparent, 
there is no light lack of light also there is no photosynthesis so that's what uh, we should allow all except carbon dioxide so that's what we took the koh in that the same activity light is essential for photosynthesis three days dark room light screen keep in the sunlight five to six hours then boil it in the methylated spirit then you will find where the light fall there only turns into blue black color where the light is absent there is no blue black color so that's what light also essential for the photosynthesis why do we keep in the dark room why did we boil in the methylated spirit why did we use light screen why did we use iodine solution so all for all questions you know very well answers clear next we are going to discuss about chlorophyll and photosynthesis without chlorophyll there is no photosynthesis already i said that there are two types of chlorophylls chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b blue green yellow green it observes photons units of sunlight okay chlorophylls are present in the chloroplast chlorophyll contain magnesium chlorophyll contain magnesium our blood contain iron okay snails blood blue in color copper so this is the difference you remember chlorophyll magnesium red blood cells iron blue cells copper so simultaneously similar similar functions we are going to find here the next who discovered chloroplast who discovered chloroplast chloroplast discovered by julius van sack is it correct is it correct once you check chloroplast who discovered what is the meaning of chlorophyll see here chlorophyll means green leaves pelatia and cavendo okay so three different questions i said that what happened here this is this had become possible in the year 1817 due to work of two scientists pelatier and cavendo who obtained an extract of green colored substance named chlorophyll chlorophyll discovered by pelatier and cavendo chlorophyll discovered by pelatier and cavendo chlorophyll is present in the chloroplast chlorophyll is present in the chloroplast okay so chloroplasts are 4200 in the god cells 4200 in the god cells so here chlorophyll present in the chloroplast chloroplast present in the plant cell chlorophyll discovered by pelatier and cavendo ab chlorophylls are there chloroplast in the plant cell which are in the god cells 4200 4200 then who discovered who discovered chloroplast julius van sack in 1833 in 1833 in 17 pelatier and cavendo chlorophyll discovered but they didn't extract means they didn't bring out from the chloroplast chloroplast discovered by julius van sack in 1883 but they also didn't bring out the chlorophyll from the from the um, plant cell the last one who who removed chloroplast from the plant cell daniel von arnan in 1954 at the first time at the first time chloroplast collected chloroplast collected okay from the plant cell who who collected daniel von arnan in 1954 this is about a discovery of chloroplast then you know that the structure of chloroplast structure uh, what what we call disc shape double layer is there how many layers are there around the chloroplast two layers are there inside the chloroplast two parts are there granum and stoma granums are connected with the stalk like structure is known as thylakoid and granum chlorophyll a and b is there in stroma enzymatic reaction and granum thylakoid light reaction occur is it clear so where does light reaction takes place and granum thylakoid in the chloroplast where does dark reaction takes place so in stroma so we discussed the 
that photosynthesis process occur in the two phases light reaction and dark reaction what do we call light reaction and a dark reaction light reaction takes place on granthylakaid dark reaction occur in stomach so enzymatic reaction in stomach so what are the end products of light reaction atp and nadph atp and nadph so i said very clearly what what are the assimilatory powers what are the end products of light reaction or what are known as assimilatory powers so end products of light reaction atp and nadph which are known as assimilatory powers these are known as assimilatory powers so to form atp and nadph light is essential so that's what the first phase which occur on granum thylakoid it is known as light reaction it is known as light reaction so this phase we will get the products which we called as atp and nadph the next so enzymatic reaction occur in stomach so in that some of the intermediate products occur 3 gpa phosphoglyceric acid then finally it change as a glucose so in the dark reaction glucose occur so what they say what is the difference between the light reaction and dark reaction so light reaction means in the presence of light only atp and nadph formation occur dark reaction means it is not occurring in dark dark reaction means independent of the light if there are atp and nadph without light also the process continues that's what that is called a dark reaction photochemical phase and biosynthetic phase we called it two phases the other names of light reaction and dark reaction finally what happened glucose formation occur water formation occur and oxygen formation occur they release into the atmosphere so this is the end of the photosynthesis process where do we find this photosynthesis process only in the green leaves green plants so that's what green plants are called autotrophs they can prepare their own food by this process for this light carbon dioxide water chlorophyll essential light to carbon dioxide is external factors water and chlorophyll in is internal factors two factors i said very clearly then we discussed about uh, what is photolysis what is photolysis breaking of water molecules with the light photo means light lysis means breaks down with the light water splitting so who discovered this robert hill discovered page number 11 page number 11 second point is there step 1 step 2 step 3 is there in the step 2 you can see that what is photolysis this is two marks or one mark question what is photolysis breaking of water molecules with the light is called as a photolysis next we are going to discuss about heterotrophic nutrition so up to now whatever we discuss that is autotrophic nutrition so all the process photosynthesis process occur in green plants only so light reaction dark reaction photochemical phase biosynthetic phase then photolysis atp and nadph assimilatory powers are end products of light reaction we discuss all in the autotrophs itself heterotrophs means which cannot prepare their own food they depend on another organisms those are called heterotrophs we are the example for heterotrophs we depend on another organisms okay next we are going to discuss about uh, uh, amoeba especially protozoans so if you observe protozoans these are the unicellular organisms with the protozoans for example amoeba if you observe that uh, i said very clearly that arrow marks you have to observe whether the amoeba moves to go to the food uh, if pseudopodia forms to go to the food uh, that is nutrition if it is away from the Uh, substance that is excretion so with the pseudopodia false feet by using the false feet locomotion occur nutrition occur digestion occur excretion occur in the single cell itself but but what about paramecium when we discuss paramecium is known as slipper animal cule don't forget it is called as slipper animal cule why it is called as slipper animal cule it look like slipper so that's what it is called as slipper animal cule 
it's called as slipper animal cule so in this especially in the paramecium itself it contain a special organ for nutrition which is called the cytostome what is the special organ present in the paramecium the paramecium special organ is cytostome the paramecium special organ is cytostome is it clear remember that what is a special organ in the paramecium for nutrition cytostome the last word in your textbook in the brackets cytostome so with the cytostome nutrition occur in the paramecium with the cytostome nutrition occur in the paramecium clear okay now next we are going to discuss about uh, parasitic nutrition heterotrophic halogenic parasite halogenic our uh, food mode is halogenic with the buccal cavity we took put into our body that is called halogenic body surface saprogenic parasitic means invasion it entered into the another organism body and they receive the food material thank you thank you thank you for coming this is completely revision for my 10th class students uh, shrinivas samma and uh, savita some satvika gar okay thank you for coming so here yeah, dodder plant which is also known as cascuta dodder plant or which is also known as cascuta parasitic nutrition what happened here a special root present in the cascuta plant what is the name of the special root in the cascuta plant astoria students remember the special root in cascuta plant or parasitic plant or dodder plant so that is that is thank you thank you srinivasam thank you parasitic nutrition there is a dodder plant so this family is convolvaci family like uh, how do we have the um, surname so this is uh, convolvaci family the surname of this family convolvaci dodder or cascuta that plant we called it in that there is a special root that is called astoria the special root is called astoria that special root penetrate into the host plant phloem phloem carries food materials in the plants no so it penetrate up to phloem it receives the food materials that special root uses to absorb the food materials from the host plant host plant means which give shelter to other organism so don't forget the root name is astoria in convolvaci family or cascuta plant or parasitic plant or dodder plant there is a special root which is called astoria next we are discussing about human digestive system human digestive system okay so ingestion mastication swallow peristalsis movement okay cardiac sphincter open it entered into the stomach okay bile releases okay next hydrochloric acid releases so here in our mouth three glands are there salivary gland sublingual submaxillary parotid <coughs> saliva releases saliva releases okay saliva act on carbohydrates it change as okay simple sugars simple sugars so that uh, bolus formation occur yeah bolus moves to go to the stomach through the esophagus by the peristalsis movement okay keeping the food ingestion grinding the food mastication swallow bolus and it moves to go to the stomach by the peristalsis movement what is the movement we can see in the esophagus peristalsis movement so outside is circular inside is a longitudinal sorry inside is circular and outside is a longitudinal cells are there tube like structures are there in the esophagus food pipe peristalsis movement so where the esophagus join in the stomach there is splinter cardiac splinter upside cardiac heart side so that's what cardiac splinter which open bolus entered into that then hydrochloric acid gastric juice present in that so there upon the proteins pepsin acts it change as peptones okay then chyme formation occur 
in that stomach mucus layer is there mucus layer protects our stomach walls from the hydrochloric acid why hydrochloric acid present in the stomach to kill the foreign microorganisms which are harm to us whatever the microorganisms are there harm to us that kill by the hydrochloric acid then chain formation occur it entered into the duodenum in the duodenum what will happen in the duodenum from the pancreas pancreatic juice from the liver bile juice bile acts on fats fat changes fatty acids and glycerols that is called emulsification what is emulsification one mark or two mark question is there what is injection what is mastication what is peristalsis movement where the uh, cardiac sprinter is there what does hydrochloric uh, why the hydrochloric acid present in the stomach to kill the microorganisms so amylase acts on dash amylase acts on carbohydrates pepsin which is present in the gastric juice it acts on proteins so bile acts on fats amylase carbohydrates pepsin proteins bile fats one time completed next pancreatic juice contain three enzymes lipase trypsin amylase second time carbohydrates fats and proteins digestion occur then it goes to the small intestine okay small intestinal juice again small intestinal juice peptases and sucrose two enzymes are there two enzymes are there again those act on all what is gall bladder below the liver the greenish color whatever is there it is called gall bladder it it dilutes the bile which is released from the liver if excessive bile in our intestines it entered into the cell it entered into the microvilli through the microvilli it entered into the blood and it is spread all over the body through the blood then we will get the jaundice gall bladder okay next cystic duct is there liver gall bladder cystic duct so completely digestion occur in the small intestine completely digestion occur in the small intestine a digested glucose a digested proteins digested amino acids enters into blood through the microvilli which is located in the inner surface of the small intestine in the inner surface of the small intestine is it clear so complete digestion in the small intestine half of the digestion in the mouth itself so different areas different ingestion mastication bolus formation peristalsis movement gastric juice hydrochloric acid proteins digestion fats digestion in duodenum jejunum ileum colon so rectum anus and as is sent out digested from the jejunum the coil like structure microvilli absorbs it transferred into the blood blood to all the body parts gall bladder is a personal assistance of the liver it is also correct yes yes yeah personal assistant yes gallstones gallstones bile if excessive bile is there that is causes for the jaundice so when we hurried and worried the word i said very clearly hepatitis we will not get good evening celusis good evening thank you for coming this is for the 10th class revision system tomorrow our lives general lives okay thank you thank you for coming good evening sister so complete digestion occur then then what happened undigested is there any that goes to ileum colon rectum anus defecation occur ingestion start defecation ends so from the mouth to anus this is called gut 
this is called digestive tract or this is also known as a, what we call gut digestive tract or alimentary canal these three words are there for that three words are there next we are going to discuss about malnutritional diseases what is malnutrition what are malnutrition diseases lack of more than one nutrient in our diet it is called malnutrition maybe proteins minerals vitamins fats all absent that is malnutrition sir why boiled juice does not contain any enzyme why boiled juice does not contain any enzyme means by juice it directly acts on fats so it doesn't require any enzyme it is already microscopic so that's what the that's what it doesn't have any enzyme right so so here what we are discussing malnutrition lack of more than one nutrient proteins and calorie may absent or fats may absent like that more than one nutrient absent in the diet diet means which we take daily so when these are absent if we eat such a food in the early age in the early age yeah yeah correct correct sonu brother so in the early age prevents here infants means childhood below 5 years socio economic factors and when mother gets second pregnancy these are the factors that mother unable to feed the child so whatever the food that infant took in that may not be present proteins or fats or carbohydrates that's what they may get malnutritional diseases so kosher for displaced child african word lack of proteins in that diet kosher for may occur okay fluffy face swelling stomach okay inactive these are the symptoms we will find in that child the second one is a marasmus proteins and calories are both absent in the diet lack of proteins and calories that in fact the child may get a marasmus disease so symptoms scaly skin then completely skeletal system will appear inactive so hepatitis no hepatitis for the child so that is marasmus symptoms the last one we discussed about obesity so if we eat more fatty substance if we eat more fatty substance okay due to the fats we become fatty that is called obesity we should not take more junk food so actually whatever the age according to age whatever the weight we should have more than that 60% high according to our age due to the obesity we will get so that is the reason the water we should not eat more fatty food item in our daily life a little fat fatty food item we have to eat next we are going to discuss about the last content in our chapter what is the last content yeah obesity means uh, fatty fatty you so here i said that bg papa biology nutrition study on formula we discuss that is very clear i think so you there are two types of fats are there two types of vitamins are there water soluble and uh, fat soluble vitamins are there so water soluble b and c fat soluble a d e k when we discussed about water soluble b complex vitamins we discussed it okay b1 b2 b3 b6 b12 b9 b5 b7 bg papa biology nutrition study b1 thiamine very very okay b2 riboflavin okay p3 niacin or nicotinic acid pellagra 
B6, okay, B6, pyridoxin anemia, B12, cyanocobalamin, pernicious anemia, B9, folic acid, so I said nine, nine months pregnancy period, so anemia, panthogenic acid, burning food, P, A, P for, we, we have to consider as a food, A for acid, burning food, okay, burning, last biotin, biotin means nerve disorder, B7, 957 I said, 1, 2, 3, 1 plus 2 plus 3, 6, B, B6, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6, B12, so that order you know very well, I think, I no need to give, so for this, the sources I said very clearly, meat, milk, egg, okay, all leafy vegetables, so some other extra, whatever you want to write, so that you can add to the list, B1, B2, B3, B6, B12, B9, B5, B7. Along with this, another one is there, ascorbic acid, vitamin C. All yellow color foods contain vitamin C. Lack of vitamin C, scurvy disease you will get. So this is about water soluble vitamins. B complex C. B1, B2, B3, B6, B12, B9, B5, B7. B1, beriberi, thiamine. B2, riboflavin, glossitis. B3, niacin or nicotinic acid. Pellagra. Okay. B6, pyridoxin. Okay. B6, pyridoxin. Anemia. Next, B12, cyanocobalamin. Pernicious anemia. Okay. B9, folic acid. Folic acid, anemia. B5. What is the B5? Panthogenic acid, burning food. B7, biotin, nerve disorder. Along with this, vitamin C, scurvy. Vitamin C, scurvy. Good evening, sis. Supraja, after a long time, thank you. Thank you for coming. I am fine. So, tomorrow is the FA1 exam for my students. So, that's what I am giving. Revision. Just, just it is a revision schedule. Ah, last, we are going to discuss about... Uh, how are you? How is your family? How is your children? Okay. Last we are discussing about the fat soluble. Yeah, student life is fat soluble. There are there are four fat soluble vitamins are there. A, D, E, K. A, retinol. Okay. Carrot, beetroot, papaya. From that we will get vitamin A. We can avoid xeraphthalmia, night blindness, blindness. So, in carrot, carotene is there. So, twice in a year, in early age, we got vitamin A vaccine. The cheapest vitamin A source is papaya. Better to eat more papaya to avoid blindness, night blindness, xeraphthalmia, whatever the blind diseases. The second one we are discussing about vitamin D calciferol from the sunlight we will get vitamin d so that's what early morning which is a red color light which starts in the beginning of the day that contain vitamin d if you get vitamin d we can avoid rickets i said the cricket wickets rickets like uh, our skeletal system will bend uh, lack of calcium in our bones that we will get from the sunlight that is vitamin d Next, we are discussing about vitamin E, tocopherol, vitamin D, calciferol, vitamin E, tocopherol, anti-sterility. So, reproductive problems in male, sperm number decreases in female abortion occur. So, lack of vitamin E, anti-sterility diseases will get. Okay. So, for all, I said very clearly, all type of fruits seasonally, meat, milk, egg, green leaf vegetables, we have to eat. That, these are the sources for all the vitamins. Next, last one, we discussed about philoquinone, vitamin K, anticoagulation of blood. When we got injured, the blood which is coming from the wound, it has to clot. 
three to six minutes. If it is not clot, then there is a problem. Lack of vitamin K or any cancers, what are the symptoms of it? So, vitamin A, retinol, vitamin D, calciferol, vitamin E, docoferol, vitamin K, philopinone. A, eye problems, D, rickets, E, fertility disorders, K, philopinone, anticoagulation of blood. This is about to complete vitamins, water soluble, fat soluble, B complex, C, A, D, E, K. Is there any doubt in this chapter? Is there any doubt in this chapter? Let me know. Let me know. Then we go with the second chapter. <sighs> Okay, any activity is there with that picture in the procedure, you have to write all without any mistakes. Aim, material, procedure with the picture, result, precaution. Don't forget to write these steps. This is very, very important task. Next, we are discussing the second chapter, respiration. Respire the word. From the respire word, we get respiration word. Respire means breathe. To breathe, respire word is CH Navin ADEK once explains sir. A retinol in our eye retina is there in carrot carotene is there retinol other name of vitamin A retinol papaya carrot beetroot okay from the leafy vegetables vitamin A we will get which is very useful for our eye. To see clearly, we will not get blindness, night blindness, scaly skin, xerophthalmia. These are the high problem diseases and skin problem diseases. Vitamin D, rickets. So skeletal system will bend in the early age, lack of calcium. That calcium we will get from the sunlight. So that's what the, the newly born babies we keep in the sunlight. Rickets. Disease name is rickets that we can prevent with the sunlight solar energy from the morning from the evening but morning is a more vitamin d we will get from the sunlight that's what we have to see in the sunlight the third one is e d is calciferol e is tocopherol calciferol tocopherol tocopherol means anti sterility reproductive problems occur in male sperm production decreases in female abortions occur lack of vitamin E that is called anti sterility the last is vitamin K the other name of vitamin K is philoquinone when you get any wound through the wound if the blood uh, flow that will flat within three to six minutes within three to six minutes okay hello host this is hello friend mixed log this is for students live thank you for coming good evening good evening welcome so vitamin k is known as philoquinone it helps for the clotting of blood right come to the second chapter so still it extends 9 10 uh, second chapter respire uh, respiration energy releasing system okay so here respire word latin word to breathe that finally it changes as respiration so here steps in respiration, pathway of respiration, two questions we discussed. Lavoisier and Priestley's experiment we discussed in that first chapter. Oxen discovered by Priestley by the Belgian experimenter. Lavoisier given name to that life gas as oxygen. So that respiration process, five steps are there. Breathe, gas exchange takes place in alveoli, transportation, gas exchange takes place in tissue level and cellular respiration. So what we breathe, the air entered into lungs. From the lungs, it reaches to the alveoli, means it reaches alveoli, alveoli into blood, that is gas exchange takes place in alveoli, that is a sec second step. Then it goes to the blood, from the blood it goes to all the cells. So from the blood into cells, gas exchange takes place, that is the fourth step. 
alveoli second step blood carries the transportation third step gas exchange takes place at tissue level blood to cells that is a fourth step in the cells that oxygen combined with the glucose at the mitochondria cellular respiration occur mitochondria is power house of the cell the whole process occur in the cell that's what that is called a cellular respiration five steps vice versa so carbon dioxide form in the cell it goes to blood blood to uh, lungs means alveoli alveoli to exhalation inhalation exhalation that is watching from cebu city cebu city philippines thank you thank you for coming uh, please connect to my link i will check later and i will give gifts to you sure thank you for coming can i give the moderator i will yeah i gave you blue blue jacket i gave you once you drop your link i will see with my another ids then i will give you later gifts okay so this is about then breathing activity is there we have to take water we have to take lime water in two test tubes and the two whole rubber cars in that test tubes and two delivery tubes we have to keep in our mouth we blow the air into the water and lime water so whatever we blow out in that in that carbon dioxide is there so that carbon dioxide turns into milky white in the lime water water will be like that only so if there is a carbon dioxide which we blow out then the lime water turns into milky white that experiment proves that we release carbon dioxide release carbon dioxide. but we have to blow air into the test tubes itself but we should not breathe in so that precaution we want to do while we are doing this activity pathway of respiration you know very well about this nostrils nasal cavity buccal cavity larynx pharynx trachea tracheole alveoli the air passes so the holes nasal cavity nostrils the channel is called nasal cavity the common passage for buccal cavity and nostrils that is pharynx below the pharynx voice box is there that is called larynx at the pharynx epiglottis is there the function of epiglottis you know that it closes the trachea it opens and closes the epiglottis will not allow the food enter into the windpipe it acts as a lid it opens while we are eating we should not laugh what is the reason you know very well violent cough occur for about so branchi branchiole finally it reaches to alveoli from the alveoli second step whatever is there in the steps in respiration reaches into blood the whole cellular process occur again carbon dioxide reaches there then the carbon dioxide alveoli to blood to alveoli alveoli to uh, bronchioles uh, bronchioles bronchus trachea trache tracheal trachea larynx pharynx buccal cavity nasal cavity nostrils it will come outside so vice versa that process occur you know the way the pathway of respiration right about uh, epiglottis function that is also you know very well about it it acts as a lid on the trachea it will not allow the food materials into windpipe if the food particles entered into windpipe violent cough occur sometimes it leads to death so that's what should not laugh the next we are going to discuss what plays a major role respiration in male and major role respiration in female diaphragm about the diaphragm i said that due to contraction elongation occur due to relaxation um, it goes back to previous shape so contraction relaxation uh, with the diaphragm inhalation exhalation occur Good night and sweet dreams, Anta. Useless fellow. What I am doing? What you are doing? So right. So diaphragm plays a major role in respiration in male. Rib cage major role in female in respiration. That is you know very well. What is inhalation and what is exhalation? Intake of air, inhalation or inspiration. A sending out air is called exhalation or expiration. That is clear. so there are double layer around the lungs that is called pleura what is the fluid present in the pleura pleuric fluid what is the function of pleura 
it protects the lungs it protects the lungs so around the around the lungs double layer is there around the heart also double layer is there that we learned in the third chapter so heart is located between the lungs around the heart lungs are there around the lungs double layer is there that double layer is called pleura in that whatever the liquid is there pleuritic fluid which protects the lungs from the external shocks pleura so upon the pleura rib cage also protects so this is pleura pleuritic fluid so 160 meter square if we open the alveoli it is equal to 1 tennis court what are the units of lungs alveoli what are the units of lungs alveoli so four questions i asked here what are the four questions what plays major role in male in respiration diaphragm what plays major role in female in respiration rib cage so what protects the lungs from the external shocks pleura it is a double layer what is present in the pleura pleura fluid so what are the units of lungs alveoli what are the units of lungs alveoli right so then page number 32 the capacity of lungs the capacity of total lungs 5800 milliliters only 500 milliliters remain remaining going out and coming inside like this gas exchange takes place in the lungs so inhalation time exhalation time gases percentage 78 nitrogen 21 oxygen 0.033 carbon dioxide then exhalation time 78 nitrogen as it is 16 carbon 16 oxygen 4.4 carbon dioxide so inhalation time <coughs> oxygen content is more exhalation time carbon dioxide content is more so that we want to remember inhalation and exhalation right oxy hemoglobin oxygen combined with the hemoglobin in the cell in the blood that is oxy hemoglobin that occur in the second step <coughs> gas exchange takes place at alveoli then deoxy hemoglobin where it occur in the fourth step hemoglobin release oxygen into the cells and it collects the carbon dioxide so deoxy hemoglobin hb plus o2 gives us hbo2 that is in six, uh, second step then hbo2 gives rest hb plus o2 that is at the fourth step in uh, steps in respiration right so next question we discuss next question what why do carry oxygen cylinders those who climb high mountain or those who swim in deep ocean locations are different but situation is the same what is situation when we go top level when we climb uh, high mountains at the top level oxygen percentage decreases anaerobic respiration occur that's what we have to carry oxygen cylinders along with us so that's what uh, whoever climbing the high mountains they carry oxygen cylinders with them when we are in deep ocean there is no oxygen there is oxygen that is dissolved state that we cannot breathe so that's what the lack of oxygen we have to carry oxygen cylinder along with it will clot it will clot when it is inside the fluid plasma then hbo2 oxyhemoglobin formation occur when it is outside it will clot so handy anti heparin function occur there is no oxidation process also at that time next what is cellular respiration already i said that oxygen combined with the glucose in the mitochondria at the elementary particles that is called cellular respiration draw the mitochondria picture matrix uh, criste matrix elementary particles glucose combined with the oxygen the whole process is called the cellular respiration what is anaerobic and what is aerobic and what is oxygen depth three questions i asked you in the presence of oxygen aerobic respiration occur in the absence of 
as an anaerobic occur here absence means less amount of oxygen is there oxygen depth means there is no oxygen that is oxygen depth okay in bacteria anaerobic respiration occur lactic um, what happens lactic acid and less amount of energy formation occur in yeast ethanol carbon dioxide less amount of co energy releases so these two are anaerobic respiration in yeast that process is called fermentation in bacteria that is called generally anaerobic respiration yeast we call it as a special name that is fermentation so our mother going to prepare idli or dosa black grams and rice soak in the water that is fermentation in that yeast grow and there anaerobic respiration occur which gives ethylene smell uh, in uh, beer alcohol making factories they are using the fermentation process aerobic means in the presence of 78 kilocalories energy releases in anaerobic 786 786 kilocalories energy releases in aerobic respiration that is a major difference so you don't forget write the difference between the aerobic and anaerobic what is fermentation what is anaerobic fermentation occur in yeast anaerobic occur in bacteria there is different uh, reasons you have to choose expand atp adenosine triphosphate adenosine diphosphate adp adenosine triphosphate atp atp and adp then what is oxygen depth there is no oxygen that is called oxygen depth so next how do you prove that anaerobic respiration also releases carbon dioxide yeast experiment you want to do so take a glucose solution add yeast powder boil it there is no oxygen then add paraffin wax in before adding the paraffin wax in janus green bee solution you have to apply so if there is very less amount of oxygen around the bacteria pink color formation occur then pour paraffin wax in to hold rubber cork in one uh, hole we have to arrange it. thermometer in another hole we have to uh, add delivery to and the other end of the delivery to keep in the lime water so let it be keep somewhere what will happen in the yeast anaerobic respiration occur lack of oxygen they release carbon dioxide that mercury levels increases in the thermometer due to carbon dioxide that carbon dioxide moves into the another beaker another test tube where the lime water is there that lime water turns into milky white so carbon dioxide releases heat releases by the anaerobic respiration in this yeast experiment we can prove it okay then we are going to discuss about respiration versus combustion i said this is also very clear respiration occur in living beings combustion has to start by someone there you want to keep the flame it will burn products are same heat and carbon dioxide released by the combustion so glucose combined uh, burn in our cells there also it releases heat and carbon dioxide but respiration is a continuous and slow process combustion it occurs only certain time later it put off combustion occur in non living beings even living beings respiration occur in only living beings so like that when you burn the sugar crystals in the test tube it change as water vapor and heat so the glucose is burning to burn the glucose oxygen add with the sugar crystals the same process occur in our cells also that is very clear okay heat is liberated during the respiration heat is liberated during the respiration before going to discuss about that uh, <clears throat> how the respiration occur in the plants yesterday itself we discussed about the project i said uh, uh, piyush or uh, lasya or uh, someone i said the last 15 members i think so this project i gave you in plants respiration occur in three ways through the leaf through the stem through the root and the leaves raining question is that and the leaves through the stomata gas exchange takes place and the leaves through the 
stomata gas exchange takes place and the stem lenticels are there gas exchange takes place through the lenticels root aerial roots in mangrove trees which are very near to the beaches in that salt content is more dissolve oxygen bo biologically demand bod dod dissolved oxygen is very less in that so that's what the roots will come out from the soil these are called aerial roots through the roots respiration occur stomata lenticels and stem aerial roots in the plants respiration occur in this way that already i gave you project i think you know very well so <clears throat> you can write elaborately so first what is respiration combustion of glucose with oxygen which occur in the cells that is called the cellular respiration in all living beings cellular respiration occur in the plants three ways respiration occur through the stomata through the stem through the root and the leaves stomata are there god cells are there stoma is there so when the god cells open through the sto stoma gas exchange takes place that is through the leaves lenticels helps for the respiration in stem aerial roots helps for the respiration in the roots that is clear next the last content how do you prove that heat and carbon dioxide releases in the sprouted seeds or germinated seeds so in a conical flask or in a glass beaker you have to take germinated seeds you have to take a small beaker along with the water along with the lime water then arrange two hole rubber bags in one hole in one hole thermometer in another hole delivery to that when you kept the lime water outside if you keep lime water in the beaker itself conical flask itself one hole rubber car enough that carbon dioxide in that glass jar only that contact with the car um, lime water then that lime water turns into milky way then due to the carbon dioxide the mercury levels increases in the thermometer so germinated seeds seeds releases carbon dioxide and heat so this is about uh, respiration chapter still is there any doubt so one hour it took i i went with the speed all activities once again you read thoroughly differences between the respiration and photosynthesis differences between the aerobic and anaerobic differences between the respiration and combustion four questions are there that you read okay shall we leave now it is time 9:30 9:30 okay i am going to stop so have dinner and read physics and tomorrow afternoon all this once again to recall in your mind you will write all the questions good night i am going to sign out sleep well get well soon